Hello guys, welcome to another YouTube video from Rossberry Productions. This is actually the ninth video on my 2009 Jeep Wrangler, and I actually decided not to make a video on this task. However, because it is quite tricky, I thought it might be worth me just stopping about halfway through and giving you guys some tips and tricks. So the job in hand is actually bleeding the clutch slave cylinder. So it's usually a five to 10 minute job on most cars where it's all accessible. It seems that on the Jeep Wrangler, they've made it as difficult as possible and it might even be easier to take the whole body off the chassis at this stage. So the, the slave cylinder is actually on the transmission bell housing, just pointing back towards the engine. So I will show you a video under the car shortly. Uh, I just thought I'd also show you the tool that I'm gonna be using. Now, because I'm doing it on my own, it's the same with when I bleed brakes, it's much easier if you do it with pressure. So you, so you can either do that pushing or pulling. So I usually use this on vacuum, so I can actually do it down underneath the car, which is exactly what I'm gonna do today. Um, I don't anticipate I'll need a whole lot of tools for the job. Um, I will run through the tools uh, in a second in the video. I'm also gonna be doing it with the car on the floor. I'm not gonna be jacking it up, so I can give you some tips of how that goes, or hopefully in the video when I go under the car, you'll be able to see that. So the next video I'll show is me going under the car and showing the current status. I'll also show you the cylinder actually remounted, just so you know what it should look like, um, and then we'll wrap it up at the end. So I've actually been going under from the passenger's side and here are the tools that I've used. I'll go through the tools in just a second, but I'll actually show you under the car first. So just going all the way under, you'll now see the exhaust, then of course your drive shaft, and then this is actually the start of your transmission, where it goes onto the bell housing. So the clutch is actually just in here, and what happens is the slave cylinder pushes on the clutch, like there, you can actually see there's a bit of a plastic kind of star on the end there as well. So from what I've seen, a lot of videos that actually goes missing and it's just a ball clip on a metal rod inside. So it's actually bolted in here. So we pass it in there. There's two 13 millimeter nuts just holding it on. The bottom one's really easy to undo, but the top one's the challenging one because you don't really have any wiggle room in here for the um, the spanner or a socket. I've tried a few different ways. I ended up doing it with a, a spanner, but just turning it maybe about an eighth of a turn each time. So it's just a lengthy process. And, but as you can see, the slave cylinder on this one's actually pretty good condition. I reckon it's actually been changed fairly recently, but just on the back of the top there, just up there, that is actually the bleed nipple. So I've done it under negative pressure, which worked fairly well, although I did have to keep tipping it up because there was obviously some bubbles down this end so I tipped it up like that to allow those bubbles to come up. Now the best tool for the job I've seen someone actually make something that you can do it from below but I just used a 12 millimeter spanner and then obviously my bleed kit on top there. So I've checked everything else everything seems to be leak free and tight so that's good um, and I'm about to go ahead and actually put it back in. I'm confident there's no bubbles I've, I've bled it quite a few times now. I'll also show you in the reservoir where the chamber is because there is a, a little bit of a tip there as well. The first time I've done it, I ran the chamber dry for the clutch system. So it's uh, a lot higher up than the uh, brake system. So that's a nice little tip for you. Um, but I'll show you the tools that I went through and also I'll show you where we fill up. So here's our reservoir, it's just over the left hand side of the engine bay looking from the front and it is a shared brake and clutch reservoir but actually if you look on the side there that is the top up that goes down to your clutch system. So what I found is there's actually like a little wall inside there and you will run out the clutch reservoir a lot quicker than the brake reservoir um, so I actually run that dry first time and I had to bleed it all the way through again so just make sure you have it topped up I was literally topping it up to probably midway through the collar there and then just bleeding it down so you might want to do the same method so just to run you through the tools I use for the job obviously a catch pan that's just handy so you don't get any fluid on your floor plenty of rag and tissue uh, a 12 millimeter spanner just for the bleed nipple and a 13 millimeter spanner to actually take the slave cinder off. 
And then this is actually my positive and negative vacuum pump that I use for bleeding brakes a lot. Uh, so I used it on about 0.5 of a bar negative um, and it worked quite well. Like I say, I just had to tip up the slave cylinder a couple of times just to make sure I got rid of all the bubbles. Um, and I just used a standard pipe connection. I didn't bother with any of the specialist ones. Just going back under the car now, I'll actually show you the slave cylinder now installed. So there we go. Um, another little bit of a top tip is to get a bar or something up there. As, as you can see, I've got a crowbar just there that's kind of wedged. And what that's doing is holding the handbrake cable just out the way, because that does get in the way when you try to put this in. Um, with the top one, I was also getting a 13 millimeter spanner and then sort of tightening it up a bit, facing forward and then spinning the um, spanner 180 degrees and doing it the other way and then spin it back and that. And I was just getting a little bit more out of it each time, but you're barely even getting an eighth of a turn, maybe less. Uh, the bottom one's nice and easy, so I actually done that one up first and I was able to spin the top one up uh, with my finger uh, quite easily. If you're going to try and bleed it whilst it's on, uh, there is a nipple cover just on the top there, so ping that off first. Um, but the problem is you actually have to turn the nipple about 180 degrees, um, which is, is quite hard. But there is a guy on YouTube that's actually made a tool to do the job. Um, you kind of put it around and twist it from below. Uh, which was quite a neat idea. Uh, another thing that could probably help you is just unbolting the drive shaft, which you've only got four bolts in the front there. And I think there's eight down the back there. Uh, so you might want to do that as well if you've got a bit more time and space than I did. Um, but yeah, tough, tough little job. So there we go. That concludes my video on some tips and tricks on bleeding the clutch system on a 2009 Jeep Wrangler. Hope you found this video interesting, but more than that, I hope you found some of the tips helpful. If you did, please go ahead, give me the thumbs up, leave me a comment down below, check out some of my other videos, especially on the Wrangler, and please subscribe to my channel.